Hello. Welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Over the summer, I read The Martian by Andy Weir, and holy planks constant, I was impressed. It's no secret that I'm a fan of science fiction, but I tend to prefer the stories that actually get the science right and respect the laws of physics. Andy Weir's The Martian delivers. It's like MacGyver in space. Mr. Weir did a tremendous job thoroughly fact-checking as he was writing these chapters. At one point, the protagonist, Mark Watney, uses stoichiometry to help him survive. How cool is that? There's so many reasons to pay attention in science class, and now you can add what the Martian taught us to the list. If stranded on another planet, science might save your life. On page 288, Mark Watney needs to make a sextant to find his latitude, you know, survive the next day. Don't want to spoil too much for you. And I thought, why should Watney have all the fun? Why don't we make our own? Sextants are historically nautical tools, and were especially important before GPS technology. They can be very precise instruments, and can be used for a wide variety of different geological mapping techniques. Today, we're going to make one Mark Watney style, and then test out our sextant's accuracy. We'll actually be able to check out how well we did with GPS technology. We'll even be able to calculate a quick percent error. Also as part of this, we're going to get to learn a little bit of constellation identification. Now, our sextant is going to be able to just measure our latitude, but still, that's pretty cool. With just some household items, we're going to be able to find out what our latitude is on the globe. You're going to need tape. You're going to need something to mark with. You need something that measures angles, so the cheapest, easiest thing is a protractor. If you get a clear protractor like I have, you're going to want a note card as well that's larger than the protractor. It also really helps, but it's not required if your protractor has one of those little holes there in the center, as you can see here. You're going to need a length of string, and I don't know how tall you are, but three feet is probably more than enough for anybody. You're going to need a mass that can hang from that string, so like a washer or a large hex nut can work for this. Then you need at least a core from like a paper towel roll. One of these tubes should work, but it's better to have it longer, so go with paper towel, not so much the toilet paper. And then something else optional that I'm going to add to this is instead of just using the, the paper towel tube, I'm also going to use a straw. That way I can compare the accuracy of the two. I have a feeling we're going to be more accurate if we've got the straw as well. You don't have to use it, but come on. It's a straw. Go get one. Two more things you're going to need. Clear night sky and Earth's gravity. And here in Michigan, that second one's much easier to come by. We'll explain to you how all this stuff's going to work, but it's a lot easier to do if we actually have it. So let's go ahead and make our sextant. Start by taking your protractor, and you're going to thread the string through that central hole. If yours doesn't have a central hole, do your best to have it hang in the middle. And either way, tape the reverse side so that way it stays in place. You want it nice and secure so that way if you pull on it, nothing becomes undone. Now set that aside for a little bit, and if you're using a straw like I am, then you're going to want to tape that to your note card. Find the long edge and put a first piece of tape on there and get the straw in place. Then you're going to use a couple other pieces of tape to make sure that it stays on and stays in place. You want it nice and straight along that edge of the note card. Once you have that, flip it over, and you're going to now place the protractor portion that we've already made up against the straw. Tape that down securely. I'm using two pieces of tape here, one on each edge. And then once you have those in place, press it firmly down and wrap it into place. Once you've got that, next you need a straight line going up and down our tube. Easiest way I've found to do this is let it just sit and rest and mark a dot on the inside right where it's laying down. Do this on the other side as well, and these two dots will be at the lowest point. That means they'll be lined up with each other. On the outside then, make another mark just on the exact same reverse side, and then flip it over and do the same. You will get two points that should make a very good straight line going up and down the tube. It's really important this line is straight. Did I forget to tell you you might need a ruler for this? Yeah, get a ruler and connect those two points. Now that we have a straight line going up and down the tube, we're going to line up our straw with it. Now if you're not using a straw, then just line the protractor up somewhere along that line. But if you're using the straw, make sure that it's lined right up with the tube, and make sure also that the angles are from 0 to 90 degrees on the end that your eye is going to look. Tape that into place, and once again we're going to tape both ends, and then maybe also use a middle piece of tape just to make sure things stay nice and secure. Don't let it interfere with the motion of that string though. Don't forget for this to work, we're going to need to tie a mast to the end of the string. If we did everything correctly, then as we look through this, we're going to be able to tilt it up and down, and as we do, the hanging mast is going to change what angle we read on the protractor. If we had it exactly horizontal with the earth, we should get a nice 90 degree angle reading. And if we pointed it straight up in the sky, we'd have a zero degree reading. 
and as we tilt it, we'll get all the readings in between. Okay, so we made our sextant. How's this thing supposed to work? Well, in order to operate it, you're going to need to be able to find Polaris, the North Star. That's, of course, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, Sigma Octanus is pretty much the same thing as a North Star, only it's a South Star. The thing is, it's a little bit dim to do this with. Sorry, Brazil. As long as you're in the Northern Hemisphere, though, if you can find Polaris, that's always going to be pointing north. So let's make sure we can find Polaris, and we'll show you how this works. Let's do a quick sketch of the Northern Hemisphere's night sky. No matter what season it is, no matter what time of the year, you'll be able to find the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper in the sky. They're kind of like companions, and it almost looks like one is pouring into the other. Now these will rotate around, so it might not be in this exact orientation, but you'll always be able to find them. And this last star on the handle of the Little Dipper, that's Polaris. These two right stars on the ladle of the Big Dipper, as shown here, they always point to Polaris. So if you can find the Big Dipper, you can follow those stars, and you can find the North Star. Now let's make sure you remember what latitude is. Here's a very simple diagram of the Earth, and if we show the geographic North Pole, you'll notice that it makes a 90 degree angle with the equator, and that's what latitude is. Any place that you stand on the globe, the angle that you would make with reference to the equator is your latitude. And these angles then translate into horizontal lines across the globe that are parallel with the equator. Now with that in mind, here's Earth, and a very far distance away is Polaris, 433.8 light years. With such a great distance between the two, that means anywhere you stand on Earth, you're going to be looking at Polaris essentially in the same direction. Everyone on Earth in the Northern Hemisphere would point their sextant in the same direction. So if someone were standing at the equator, they'd be pointing their sextant parallel with the horizon, and they'd get a reading off of our sextant of 90 degrees. If someone were at the North Pole, they'd have to point theirs straight up, and they'd get a reading of 0 degrees. Let's take it somewhere on the globe between those two points. If we were standing at a latitude of 40 degrees, then our protractor is going to read for us 50 degrees. You may have picked up on the idea that a very simple equation can translate these readings into what our latitude is. Our latitude is going to equal 90 minus whatever our protractor is reading off for us. So I'm actually going to go out there and I'm going to make two measurements, one with just my cardboard tube and then the second with my straw. When I'm done, I'm going to be able to calculate the percent error for both of them and we'll do that together. So here's my hypothesis. I'm going to make two this time. My first hypothesis. I'm going to be able to sight in Polaris with my cardboard tube and I'm going to be able to make a measurement of my latitude within, and I'm just throwing a number here, 5% error. So 5% error or less. My second hypothesis. I'm going to be able to also sight in Polaris using a straw and that I'm going to have a more accurate measurement when we go to check this out. So I'm going to say the straw is going to have a percent error that is less than the percent error for my first measurement. All right, let's go out there and do it. All right, well, we've been waiting for clear nights and uh, haven't gotten many, but it is clear enough to where I can see Polaris. We tried to pick it up on the camera, but it's just not working out. A little bit of drizzle, so I don't want my paper tube to get too wet. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I found Polaris, I found the Big Dipper, and I'm, I used the two right-hand side stars of the ladle of the Big Dipper to point towards Polaris, plus it's also the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper, so it's pretty easy for me to find these days. All right, let's see if we can sight this in. Okay, I'm, I'm at Polaris. I'd say it's in the center, so I'm gonna right there would be the reading okay that's our first measurement now so that way I don't bias the results I'm gonna start fresh I'm gonna use just the straw try to get a new reading okay I've got it all right okay that's my measurement Okay, thank you, Night Sky, for cooperating. Let's get out of the rain. So here's our two measurements. 45.0 degrees for the tube, 48.5 degrees for the straw. Okay, so we got our measurements. How'd you do? Did you get the same thing I got? Actually, unless you're coincidentally at the same latitude as me, I don't think you should have gotten what I got. Whatever your measurement was, you're going to take 90 and you're going to subtract your degrees from that. 
In order to check your latitude, probably the easiest thing to do is just grab a hold of the internet and make it tell it to you. There's so many different places where you can find out what your exact latitude is. You got a smartphone, a lot of smartphones have GPS technology and you can get apps also that can work as geologic mapping compasses. So go get that calculator, I'm going to show you how I do my measurements and we'll see if my hypotheses were supported or disproven. Most important part, data analysis. The measurement I was able to make with the tube gave me 45 degrees for my latitude the straw gave me 41.5 degrees. Now to get my actual latitude I consulted two different sources, went to an online website and also used my app on my phone that gives me GPS coordinates. And in both cases, while they didn't exactly agree, they did give me 42 degrees and 44 minutes. So I can say with good confidence that my actual latitude is 42 degrees and 44 minutes. But I gotta still convert that 44 minutes to a decimal of a degree. Since in latitude readings, minutes are out of 60, makes sense, right? Then to convert it, you take your minutes reading and you divide that by 60, convert that to a decimal. This gave me then an actual latitude of 42.7 degrees. So that's the value I'll be using to compare my results. Now some of you may be familiar with this percent error equation that involves taking the actual value, subtracting the experimentally found one from it, finding the absolute value of that, and then dividing it by the actual value again. Then multiply by 100. Well, this isn't actually going to work for our sextant and our measurements. Let me show you why. Imagine you have somebody doing this in Juneau, Alaska, and they measure their latitude just one degree off. The actual latitude is 58.3 degrees. If they use that equation, they're going to wind up with a percent error of 1.72%. Not too bad. They were only one degree off, so we would expect a low percent error. But what if somebody in Bogota, Colombia did this? They, too, were just one degree off. The latitude in Bogota is 4.7 degrees. If they use this calculation as is, then they wind up with a percent error of 21.28%. That's huge. They should be the same percent error. They were both just one degree off. Living closer to the equator shouldn't give you a larger percent error. So this equation just doesn't quite work for us. We need to come up with something better. Here's a very similar equation, but instead of dividing by the actual value, we're dividing by 90 each time. This makes sense. The most we could ever be off in our measurement based upon how we made our sextant would be 90 degrees. And if we were off by 90 degrees, well then that would give us 100% error with this equation. So yeah, this is the one that we need to use. This would give the same results for that Juno and that Columbia example. Alright, moment of truth. With my tube reading, I get a percent error of 2.56%. And since my hypothesis was that I'd get less than 5% error, then we can say that hypothesis was supported. Yay, science. With my straw reading, I wind up in the equation with an error of 1.33%. And that's also less than our original one, so that hypothesis also is supported. So in this lab, we supported the idea that not only can you get an accurate reading from our sextant, but also if you use a straw to do the reading, you'll get an even more accurate answer. Go science. 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 Hey, hope you had fun with this, and I hope you learned something too. If you enjoyed this lab, please give it the thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you want to check out more Indie Labs in the future. Also, do you have a topic or a concept you'd like to see an Indie Labs explore? Go ahead and leave a suggestion in the comments below. No promises, but from time to time, I'll try to fulfill some requests. Thanks for doing this with me. Hope you felt like an explorer, and I'll see you next time. I want to go to Mars. You know it ain't that far. Invaders terraform in the layers. We need the devices to keep the life stable. From oxygenators to water reclaimers, we have the technology. Why wait for later? We get outposts, bobos, tables, or bobos, hormones, forward course for our growth. For our the chores, get our future vote. Keep it in mind, election time when you're casting your vote. Cause if in public favor, we'd already be there. Can't sit at home waiting for the next crater. We gotta act now, let's be innovators.